Welcome to the final edition of the Coach Chris Hatcher Show for the uh, 2022 football season presented by Alabama 811. I'm your host, Kevin Black. One, of course, each week this season, we've been joined by Sanford head football coach Chris Hatcher. Sanford's historic 2022 season came to an end on Friday night in the quarterfinals of the NCAA FCS playoffs with a 27-9 defeat to the North Dakota State Bison on the road in Fargo, North Dakota. Sanford ends the season with an 11-2 record. The 11 wins are the second most in a season in program history, only behind the 1991 edition of the Sanford Bulldogs. Coach, I know the season did not end the way we wanted it to Friday night, but boy, it's been a season to remember, hasn't it? It really has, and of course, we appreciate you doing this show each week with us and um, all the folks behind the scenes. It takes a, an army to, to run a football program, and we're very fortunate that we got a great administration, a great team of coaches um, and support staff, and then more importantly, um, a special thanks to our team. Um, they performed at a high level all year. Um, you've heard me use words professional, um, enjoy playing together, ultimate team, find a way. Um, they were all of that and um, I mean, what a season it was. Um, you know, we had 10 straight wins, um, Southern Conference champions outright, um, had some, some, some great games, two overtime um, wins to conclude our home stretch, first home playoff game. Um, so there was a lot of first. And um, our team was, um, you know, we finally got to enjoy that um, yesterday in our final team meeting of the semester. Um, we had a lot of seniors. Um, that the, was the last time they suited up Friday night that uh, will be sorely missed. Um, and I told them, you know, hey, don't be, be sad it's over, be glad it happened. And um, what a season it was. And I'm, I'm very blessed to be the coach. And it was probably um, one of the most fun seasons that I've ever had. Um, and that was because of the, the way our guys conducted themselves on a daily basis to prepare um, to play well each and every Saturday. Well, let's talk about the game on Friday night in Fargo. The first half was all about defense as the two teams swapped punts most of the first half. Coach, I thought our defense in the first half really matched kind of the physicality that you, that you expected to see with North Dakota State. Um, we, we stopped them on a fourth down, uh, ending a scoring threat. Uh, we held them scoreless, really, for most of the half, just to the very end. That We really played well on defense. We, well, that's probably one of our best defensive efforts um, that we've had all season. And, you know, you look at the two defeats we've had, um, you know, it's been just lack of offense that, that got us the Georgia game, 33 nothing, And then the other night we had a very difficult time moving the ball. Um, Tippy Cap to North Dakota State, not only were they big, but they were extremely fast, one of the fastest teams we played all season long. Um, but defensively, I thought um, our guys, they held up to the physicality that North Dakota State brings. Um, you know, we couldn't hold on to the ball very long offensively. I thought we wore down some, but um, that, was, that was due to lack of offense. Um, but yeah, the biggest difference to me in the, in the entire game was, um, you know, we, 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 we stopped them on a fourth down. We drove it all the way down and, and got a field goal blocked. If we were able to punch that one in um, for a touchdown, um, momentum would have definitely been on our side. Um, we gave up the touchdown late um, in the third quarter and then had an unfortunate call go against us that put North Dakota State back in field goal range with no time left on the clock. Um, and then you go in at down 10 um, and it just, that, that, that last field goal, it just seemed to take a little oomph out of us and we just never really were able to recover in the second half. But um, you got to tip your cap North Dakota State. They won nine out of the last 10 national championships. They had a great environment up there and they're a really, really good football team. But I'm proud of our guys because I thought we held our own for the most part of the evening. Well, it was, it was a tough assignment, certainly for Quincy Crittenden at quarterback, who went 8 for 17, 52 yards in the first half. Um, as you said, Bison defense really just stifled our offense some momentum. Um, with, with Quincy starting at quarterback, uh, what were your words of encouragement to him going out there? Um, I guess it's just pl play the next play, right, as it's been all season for Quincy. Well, sure. You know, I, you know there's no – um, magic words that you can give anybody. You know, we talk all the time in our quarterback meeting, hey, have good fundamentals and, and, and go through your reads and do what you do each and every day. And, um, you know, that we, we got a little push. Their defensive line got in his lap a few times. Um, I thought he scrambled out of the pocket a couple times, maybe a little too, too soon. 
Um, but it was a tough environment. Um, only your, your, your first start ever um, in the quarterfinals of the playoff. Um, you know, it was a tall task, but I thought once the first drive was over, he settled in there. Um, and, you know, I, I thought that, um, you know, he came in and did the best he could. Um, but, you know, there wasn't much. We didn't have a lot of guys get open. We couldn't run the ball really well. And when you can't do that, um, you know, it's very difficult. And, um, you, know, and I, you know, I feel bad because whenever we don't play good on offense, it's like I didn't put us in the right position to be successful. Um, but, um, but, again, I thought he competed at a high level. Um, unfortunately, um, we just we couldn't get much going there other than a couple of drives late in the ball game. Well, Michael Harris takes over at quarterback in the second half. Coach, what, what led to the decision to start Mike in the second half? Well, well, first of all, you know, I, I left it up to those to Mike to decide if he felt comfortable, um, you know, going. And you know, Mike's got a, has a broken wrist on his throwing hand, so just for him to even be able to attempt to play um, just tells you how tough he is and what a competitor um, that he is. Um, you know, he he didn't feel like he was quite ready to go at the beginning of the game. Um, it's one of those injuries that at practice he'll throw four or five really good balls and then. He'll throw maybe a, 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 a bad ball and have to go sit down and rest his wrist until the, to the, um, so we can get a feeling back in his hand. Um, but about midway through the second quarter, he mentioned, hey, I, I think I can go. Um, we wasn't doing very well, so we throw him on out there, and I thought that um, you know, he played extremely well. But um, what a great season he had, um, and it's unfortunate that he got hurt um, and didn't have a chance to really show everybody what he was capable of doing. Well, Coach, 10 years from now when we bring this team back to honor them at halftime, which is probably going to happen, what will you remember most about the 2022 edition? Um, I just think, you know, again, it, we, we use the words like we started find a way. It's a find a way group. Each week it was somebody different um, making a play. And, um, and, and, and again, I think the other thing is it just how much fun it was to coach the guys because they just every day they showed up. Um, they did what they were supposed to do, and it, it showed on game day. And um, again, um, to win 10 straight, um, to have a season like that, is very difficult to do. And um, you got to give all the credit to our players. Well, Coach, as we turn the page and look ahead, there will be a lot of seniors and graduate players to replace. How does a season like this and national exposure, exposure on ESPN and this type of playoff run, how does it, how does it help us in recruiting? Well, time will tell on that. Um, you know, recruiting's a, um, a finicky thing. You know, you um, everybody comes highly recommended, and um, you know, you gotta. The big thing is you gotta find um, the right fit, the the fit for, for for our team, what we're looking for, the fit for this university. Um, but I do think um, you know we talk about it out there all the time. You know, sports is a a great front door for any university, and I think the way our guys handle themselves. You know, to get to play on national TV on a on a Friday night, the quarterfinals on such a big stage, um, it brings a lot of exposure to our school, um, and 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 that's just a direct reflection to the the student athletes we have on our team. So, um, you know, everybody everybody likes a winner, and hopefully um, that'll attract some 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 more prospects that want to come join in on what we're doing. And like I said, hopefully um, get a little further. Um, next year because I tell you what this was a lot of fun we had a lot of good shows and um, and, and it, it, again this um, Sunday mornings are a lot better after a win than a defeat without a doubt well coach it has been a great season uh, hope you and your family enjoy a great Christmas and holiday season hopefully you can find some time to rest as well well I appreciate you doing the show we appreciate the Sanford Nation for supporting us all year what a ride it was and everybody have happy holidays Merry Christmas and let's do it again next year let's do it again in 2023 well that'll do it for uh, the final edition of the Chris Hatcher Show for the 2022 football season. All year we've been presented by Alabama 811.